So in our textbook, Social Psychology, the Science of Everyday Life, the author uses the band The Grateful Dead when talking about group processes. It goes a little something like this. In the history of rock and roll, few bands have had such devoted fans as the Grateful Dead. When the band began touring in the late 1960s, die-hard fans known as Deadheads piled in their vans and followed along. Knowing that the band's improvisational style meant that no two concerts would be the same. Over the next 30 years, a growing number of deadheads traveled with the band from city to city, some of them spending decades of their lives on the road. To say that deadheads are a bunch of people who are all like the Grateful Dead misses the strong sense of community that binds them together. Before the invention of social networking sites and blogs, deadheads shared personal stories with one another through newsletters such as the Grateful Dead Almanac, and they created their own economy at concerts, buying and selling veggie burritos, t-shirts, and other essentials. As a community, Deadheads expected each other to behave in certain ways and socialized newcomers to conform to those expectations. This can be seen when following the release of the band's 1987 album, In the Dark, concerts were flooded by younger fans whose belligerent behavior disrupted the mellow atmosphere that Deadheads treasure. To restore order, senior deadheads organized a mass distribution of flyers, introducing everyone to the quote-unquote cool out. Deadheads also organized substance abuse programs and worship services. Even today, Two decades after the band's guitarist and frontman Jerry Garcia died and the band stopped touring, Deadheads continue to interact and help each other by sharing travel stories on fan websites and exchanging recordings of live performances free of charge. The group has become much more than a collection of people who happen to like the same band. Virtually every human on the planet identifies with at least one cultural group, whether it is a small tribe or a billion-person nation. They also identify with groups formed on the basis of common genes, which is the family, geography, neighborhood associations, ideology like religion, causes, goals, broad social interests, and shared experiences. From living in groups, people are socialized into a world of view that defines their self-concept and shapes their everyday behaviors. In my next video lecture, we will review what a group is and why people join them. Also, when and why people cooperate in groups, as well as how they perform around others. We will review how groups make decisions and interact with leaders, and why people sometimes leave groups.